Why are you calling them cheeks? They're just mangoes. Like now I feel like I'm eating cheeks. <laughs> cheeks are delicious. You know what's really rude? <laughs> the word for cheeks. There's cheese. a note on this that says, not a low calorie food. That's what I'm eating it for. I'm eating it for the <laughs> ton of sugar. You don't gotta be in my face about it. <laughs> like, it's like someone giving you a, like a slice of cake and they're like, by the way, this is really bad for you. And you're like, yeah, no, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Hannah Kaiser, and this is The Bandwagon. At this point, every team outside the hot mess that is the NL East has played at least as many games this season as they did all last year. And rather than dwell for too long on how wildly abnormal baseball as well as everything else was in 2020 and the way that it continues to reverberate in our inherently relative conception of time and seasons and all that this week I'm bandwagoning the teams that have risen to the top. These are your would-be 60-game season division winners. Small sample size caveats have given way to substantive narratives about each team. And these are the six for which the story is, hey, they may really win this division. And plenty of races are still super tight, and there is still more than enough time for the probable powerhouses who are still in second to run away with it all. But as of early June, this is what the first line of the standings look like around baseball. AL East. Tampa Bay Rays. Uh, after coming up two games short of winning it all last season, the Rays frustrated with few fans that can convince the root for a team that's actively applying to be on House Centers International by being the Rays. Stop me if you've heard this one before. They shed some of their top pitchers to save money in what appeared to be a concession that they were content to be just a little bit worse. Instead, maddeningly, they are back atop a division that is supposed to be dominated by deep pockets. Older than Dirt and also literally his own general manager, Rich Hill, is somehow still an above average starter in his 17th big league season. A marvel, says Rolling Stone. Remarkable, says Pace Magazine. Mesmerizing, says IndieWire. Wow. <laughs> somehow even confounding moves like flipping extremely likable everyday shortstop Willie Adamas for a couple of relievers and then not even bringing up their top prospect who also plays short are paying off. Further proof that while the rest of the league is playing checkers, the Rays, like probable Gucci Muse Tyler Glass now in Washington Square Park every time the team comes to New York, are playing chess. <laughs> <laughs> AL Central. Despite the loss of Eloy Jimenez and Luis Robert to months long IL stints, and in spite of a manager who doesn't seem to understand that buses are for taking when you've had a few too many drinks and not for throwing your players under, the White Sox are enjoying what feels like a charm season. Turns out the no-hitter was just the start of Carlos Rodon's breakthrough that seen him turn barely 40 innings of below average pitching the past two years into a sub 2.00 ERA this season. Nick Magical hits pretty well but never walks. Yohan Moncada gets so many walks he basically doesn't need to hit. Yerman Mercedes got his own nickname haircut into his head in the middle of a slump. And Tim Anderson is selling me on these City Connect uniforms, even though I still think if you paired them with a smoking slipper, you'd swear they were silky PJs. And since Cleveland isn't trying and the Twins, I actually have no idea what happened to the Twins. Uh, but the point is, the White Sox are set up to cruise to a division title, which means you will almost certainly be rooting for this team come October. Go Sox! Royals! AL West! About a week into the baseball season, the A's were 1-7. And then they won 13 games in a row. And as a Ooh. bunch of bros are wont to do, the team adopted a well-deserved celebratory slogan during that time. Ride the wave. It's cute, really. Uh, and they got really into it. Really, really into it. I guess if it ain't broke, don't change it. And if you were wondering, it did not stop at just the hand gestures. On that winning streak, I said, man, rider the wave, like what we got going on here. And I found this thing. And I ain't gonna lie, this thing's about 40 pounds, and uh, it was it was not cheap. And Manaya said, I'm, I'm pulling the trigger on it. And it's been our little thing inside, and I guess he just he said, tonight's the night we break it out. Actually, it only weighs 18.7 pounds and costs about $400, according to the Amazon listing, helpfully tracked down by Tori Hart. G-masking 2019 mythology metal curry adult cosplay trident one one meant weapon props, because... <laughs> What are sports, if not culturally sanctioned adult cosplay? True. <laughs> True. NL East. If I had half as much money as Mets owner Steve Cohen, you couldn't pay me enough to be on Twitter. But bless that billionaire sense of self-importance and the ability to get almost 9,000 likes on this kind of astute analysis, because it allows us to recap the Mets season to date in just three tweets. Here, we have Cohen in the midst of a Mets injury onslaught that left even the lovable bench mob depleted. Basically, if Team Tebow hadn't given up on baseball, this was probably his best chance to get called up. And yet, only a week later, fans were celebrating a solid lead in the NL East that admittedly otherwise looks like a race to the bottom. How did that happen? In a word, 
Jacob DeGrom. That's two words. Uh, it's been more than a month <laughs> since we built basically an entire episode around this seemingly unsustainable, better than Bob Gibson numbers, and now they're literally even more impressive. We are over two months into the season, and he still has given up the same number of earned runs that he himself has scored. Tywin Walker is looking like the best addition of the offseason with his 2.17 ERA, and like nobody even cares because he's in the same rotation as Jacob DeGrom. Yeah. Poor guy. All right. NL Central. Because DeGrom has been helping himself so much on offense, he can no longer claim the mantle of unluckiest starter. Instead, the lowest run support in the league crown now belongs to Milwaukee Brewer, Corbin Burns. Congratulations, yes. sir. Your sir? teammates are so <laughs> dumbstruck by your ability to go nearly 30 innings without giving up a single walk that they forgot to swing the bat. <laughs> that walkless streak to start the season has since been snapped, but Burns is still striking out 11 and a half batters for every free pass, which feels like it's gotta be the best in baseball. Except, nope, it's Jacob DeGrom. Damn it, uh, this was supposed Got to be a Brewers segment. Brandon Woodruff is probably the best player who I regularly forget exists. <laughs> <laughs> And that brings us to the NL West, where just as everyone hoped, the California teams are making every matchup feel like a postseason series, a true battle between powerhouses. The division is currently led by an established dynasty with the best record in baseball. I'm talking, of <laughs> course, about the San Francisco Giants. Now five years removed from their last postseason appearance, the Giants are proving you absolutely can do fan service and still win if you simply accept that baseball seasons are largely determined by depth. And it also helps if Kevin Gosman conveniently learns a six splitter that turns him into a top five pitcher of the sport. Mm. New fatherhood, not to mention an entire year to rest his knees, has turned 34 year old catcher Buster Posey into a 321, 403, 571 hitter. His age says he should start going by Gerald, but his production is all vintage Buster. <laughs> <laughs> as far as a replicable formula goes, as long as you can place a 92 mile an hour fastball at the end of it, a delivery that looks like your dad trying to keep up with a TikTok dance in real time is very disarming to batters. <laughs> Just ask the Cueto. <laughs> Seriously though, I don't know why more people don't do this. Where's the stat cast on that? <laughs> My guest this week is the voice of the White Sox, Jason Benetti, who is going to tell us how he would fix baseball. Jason, take it away with your humble proposal to fix baseball. So I have two proposals. You can pick the one that would be a rules adjustment and the one that would be an add to All-Star Weekend. Which one would you want? Ooh. Oh, man. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Give me the All-Star Weekend one. So the All-Star Weekend one is a quick one. Uh, I believe we should have a triples derby. <gasps> how would that work? You would take a batter and there would be outfielders. And the idea would be that the batter would try to go for a triple. It'd be like home run derby, you'd have somebody throwing you the baseball and you would hit the ball and you would then decide based on your time and your thought that you could get a triple, whether or not you wanted to peel away from the batter's box. But it would oh. show off speed, agility, and decision-making. And then is it a number of pitches or is it like you get to keep going until you make an out on the base paths? Uh, it's, it's a timed event. So okay. I would say you give people maybe 10 minutes you would just hit as many baseballs as you want, but the key would be in the decision making. And it's like how many triples you can get in the 10 minutes. That's the one that wins. Right, you're right. It's how many triples you can get. And the fielders would be in charge of trying to throw you out. Like you yeah. just need the assumption that everybody was working on the level here. And you could make some sort of um, monetary incentive for the people in the outfield. You could make it fans if you wanted to, right? Like a <laughs> six or seven fans instead of three regular baseball players. And if they contribute to a throw that throws out Cedric Mullins, they get 50 bucks. I don't That's know. an amazing addition. Here's the thing. What if instead of a timed event, it was like you get to go until you get out? Then you have the, the we talk about the stamina, the sort of inherent getting more tired comes into play. Like how many triples can you leg out before you can no longer get there in the time you thought you could? That's right. That's right. I, I think there's a lot of pride that would go into this. Because yeah. nobody would want to be sucking wind in minute right. number two or on ball number eight. I think they right. would all want to show that they were all in the best shape of their lives. We hear that all the time in spring mm -hmm. training, right? I'm in the best shape of my life. Prove it. I wish we could get like a defense aspect into it because I think that the defense is so much better than ever. And that when we talk about like wanting to get more athleticism and part of why we should try to have more balls in play in 
regular games is, you know, base hits are amazing, you know, close plays are amazing, but also the opportunity to make an amazing play is an amazing feat to get to witness in a baseball game. I have an idea now that we're talking this out. It could be a two-way event, right? So you'd need, yes. you could have a captain and they would have to pick the best fielder and triple likely player to be yes. on their team. And you get points oh. for throwing the runner out as well. Head so to head. They're both, yes. Tournament style. I love yes. this. I genuinely think we got to take this to the league. Right? I think if we want more of this in the game, let's celebrate it. Let's shoot off fireworks for them on one night on All-Star Weekend. This was amazing. Jason Benetti, I am a fan of your humble proposal to fix baseball. Yes! <laughs> I can't believe we're going to have you back because I want to hear the rule change one. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. I want to hear it later. I won't. This week, we're talking about all the teams that are currently sitting atop the standings. And if we get lucky, they will still be sitting atop the standings when you watch this. And then if we get unlucky, you'll be like, what the hell, man? There's somebody else in first place. And I am sorry. That team is probably very interesting and very good, too. And maybe we'll talk about them later, uh, maybe after the All-Star break, which should definitely include a triple story. Yeah.